Well, this is a special edition of Terp Talk. We're doing as a podcast down here at 701 Pratt Street after the uh, press conference from the Board of Regents led by uh, Jim Brady, where the announcement was made today that DJ Durkin has been reinstated as head coach of the University of Maryland. Damon Evans will be kept on board, and Wallace, Dr. Wallace Lowe, will remain as president. But he subsequently announced that he will retire in June of 19. So, Wayne, we've got Wayne and Mason here. Wayne, I'll let you give the substance, all right, of what was said and why that decision was made. You know, it, even after reading everything I've read and listening to what was said today, I'm still not sure what was said that got everybody to change their mind. I know that they reviewed everything. They accepted all the recommendations in the report. They had Wallace Lowe. They had Damon Evans. They had D.J. Durkin come in and talk to the Board of Regents and express their views on how the future could be laid out. And in the end, they decided to listen to apparently what was written in the report and reinstate D.J. Durkin as the head coach and keep everybody else on for now. Well, basically, he said that after the review of the second commission, right, it was decided there was no toxic culture at Maryland. And yes. that seemed to have turned the tide. And then, of course, last Friday, uh, they interviewed Durkin and Damon Evans, and apparently they must have been impressive uh, upon the Board of Regents as to what they were going to do and as to uh, how they were going to implement all the uh, suggestions from the two commissions. Well, I read it th that the idea was to be a fact-finding mission, uncover all the facts that were involved. So to me, it surprises me a bit that interviewing somebody after all these facts are out there would sway the commission. Well, if you're going to have a commission and not interview the people you're deciding on, I mean, how, how can you not interview them? All right? And when it came up that the a decision was made there was not a toxic culture right. that uh, the next thing was the interview. Right. Mason, what's your take? Take is that they ha paid all this money, got this review done, they're going to follow it regardless of whatever whatever they came up with was going to be the decision one way or the other. They were just the people that looked at what was on the paper. Well, they trusted the people who did the review, obviously. Well, they put together the commission, so right. it was just kind of the whole time we've been seeing the same thing. With the Walters report, they took all the recommendations from that. With this one, they took everything. They obviously felt that this was not something that they themselves could review, so they found what they believed to be the right people to do it, and they followed what those people said. And now, they, in, on the other hand, they did say that the people involved were partially to blame or equally to blame. Yes, they did, and, and that surprised me. Yeah, and they admitted that. So and the people involved, once in being low Durkin and Damon. Damon Evans. Right. But uh, I thought a couple questions were as good as to what they said. You asked one of them that what did they say in that meeting last Friday that convinced you? And they just talked about how Damon Evans had a plan to attack the whole A detailed culture. plan. A that detailed they plan. That apparently the board really liked that plan and addressed the topics that needed to be well, addressed. They didn't, they didn't even go as far to say what that plan was. They well, how could he, they? How he could has they? a plan. Right. Well, how Not to address you? anything. A plan. I, I didn't... That I no, really they said was he not. had a detailed plan. All okay, right. A detailed plan, a plan. They, say to, they still did not say what that well, plan entailed. And then when you asked them that... He said, no, the well, plan, that's not... The plan was to attack the re the uh, recommendations that the committee did. I, I'm not going to fault them for not coming out and giving us every detail. I think they were quite clear on the fact they expect these fine folks that have the jobs of being the president, athletic director, and head coach to sort of take care of themselves and do the right thing as talk things about move this, forward. Talk about this oversight committee, which seems to be... They're key to have a committee. I wonder who's going to be on it and whatever, but uh, to have that committee to watch everything. Well, there's a committee, and then they also mentioned there's going to be an actual person, a monitor that is with the program. Mason, what do you make of that? That, I guess, that is really hard to judge because the only comparison that I can really think of to that is like the NFL independent neur neurologist. 
But this this will be different than that, because this person will be almost a coach. I mean, what what's going to stop that person from being involved in this? I mean, um, I guess I guess the nature of the person, the is nature involved. of the person, right? Yeah, well, independent independent to who? If they put in, he's independent so, to the football team. No, no, no. No, I don't think you're understanding what I'm saying. If you're there every day with those kids, it, it and then you get to know them, and right. then how are you independent unless you're okay. a lawyer? Well, that, or that, that's true about, it, as a, you said, exactly. any it's anything. Position. It's not so football. It's, it's somebody anything. look up the definition of independent. Uh, uh, somebody that has a Google. Yeah, I, impartial. Uh, right. That you have to maintain your independence. Right. That is a professional level job. But the other part of that. And plus, be, it's a work in progress. Be, yeah, exactly. Right. It is a work in progress. Jim Brady Someone said it was a work in progress. Call him out when they feel he's out of line. It's kind of just uh, someone there to well, say, I hey. Think, on the other hand, it gives the players, if this is truly an independent voice that's there, it gives the players, if something is going wrong, somebody to go to. I would assume it's outside of the program. So, so that could be good, could be bad, but it's going to be different. I think the, the, the most important thing today is that finally there's a decision. And I think the indecision has just been, it's just been going on and on and on. Whether they're right or whether they're wrong, time will tell. Right. Whether, you know, DJ and, and Evans can turn everything around, or, you know, time will tell. But there needed to be a decision because it, you just you can't live in limbo all the time. Oh, we've been in limbo for a while. Yeah, and back to that definition, Bruce, I found it for you. Okay. Free from outside control, not depending on another's authority. Okay. What? That works. That works. If they can keep that going, that works well. Uh, impact, you're closer to student age. If you're at Maryland and you're involved in this, what do you perceive the impact that the school is going to be for this? At the school? At the school. I mean, this is really supposed to be at the school. At the school or for the players on the team? I'll go with the school first. I'm going to go to Bruce for the players. You well, should go to him for the players. Yeah, I think you should go to me. Go to him for the Bruce, okay. Bruce has got it. Bruce, okay. what? Okay, flip this. Go ahead. Okay, as a player, um, that's a hard one. It depends on what was going on while he wasn't there. And if I really liked Matt Canada as a coach, I might just be like, I don't like this anymore. I don't want him back. He can he can leave. He's He's been gone. Mm -hmm. But as uh, if I liked him and my family liked him, and that's why I came to Maryland as part of Philly to play for DJ Durkin, then I guess I'm happy. But it depends on how things were going with Canada because a sense of normalcy, it's been what? This is their eighth week of playing football. Mm -hmm. This will be game number nine. Right. And I wonder so what the I, impact's going to be on I've the team. I've played nine games for Matt Canada. They probably set in to new values and new... Yeah, but most of the players way. on the team were either played for DJ or recruited by him, right. and they know who he is. And look, again, this was the result. This was a decision that had to be made. We didn't know how. You and no, me didn't I'm know this shocked. morning yeah. how yeah. it was going to go. If, if we could go back to the top of the show, if you said, how does this make you feel, I'd say overall, I am shocked. I'm amazed. I'm almost flabbergasted that DJ Durkin stole the coach. They didn't let anybody go. I can't believe that the University of Maryland stuck by a football coach. Well, and... If you just give me one more thing, go I'll ahead. go back to the quote that Matt Canada might have been the words that he's used the most in any press conference. I'm just the offensive coordinator, and now, now you'll really get to see. Now you'll know. He's just the, he can go back up at the booth if he wants or whatever, but okay. I'm sure it'll be a couple of weeks. But. Okay, you know a lot of, Bruce, you know a lot of big donors. You're very active in the community. You're going to see 500 people tonight at an event. What do you think they're going to ask you, and what are you going to tell them? What happened? Why did it happen? The typical questions you would expect, and I don't really, I only have to know what the Jim Brady talked about in Wallace Lowe. But I, I mentioned this about a month ago to you and on Turp Talk and to Mason, that I really believe that as each day went by without a decision, it worked in DJ's favor. Okay? Yeah. That... It meant that maybe they were finding things out that turned the tide in his favor. I don't know because I didn't sit in the meetings. But as it was prolonged, it just seemed to be working in his favor. I would agree with that point, but for a different reason. I think that, and I remember, and I'll just give our reaction to it as an example, we were driving from somewhere to Chicago. Right, from Purdue to Chicago. Yeah, from 
Butler, Chicago. Right. Yeah. And uh, you're getting in the car and you read this thing. It's like, jeez. Well, I got to get rid of this one. I got a text message from Bruce to the guy that were going to suspend him and that the whole. Yeah, that and you was got a got huge rid of this shot. one and this one and this one. And you're right. The time did help, but the, the not making the snap decision, looking at the facts, and doing due diligence. I think that's the big word here. We we know him. I'm sure Wallace knew him. I'm sure Damon Evans, whoever was in authority here, knows who DJ Durkin right. is. And they got it to the point where we're going to have someone look into this. We're not just going to say, all right, ESPN's right. Let's fire him. Let's see. Right. This isn't right. worth well, you know, time. here's the bottom line. No matter what you did or no matter what happened, it's not bringing the young man back to life. It was a tragic, tragic event. And uh, how do you deal with it? It's a extremely difficult decision. But they obviously, by hiring these commissions and having uh, on the Board of Regents 14 of the top people in the state, all right, you can't deny that. Nope. And... Uh, the commissions, you know, guys like Robert Ehrlich and just the, the you know, former governors and former, you know, captains of industry in the state. And, and uh, by having all these people on the commission that uh, they believed in the commission and as what normally happens at Maryland, all right, from what my years and years, they assigned a group of people to give recommendations and make you know, possible decisions, and they followed it. And you can't really fault them I mean, for and that, that. And basically, that's what happened. You are listening to Coons Ford Presents the first Terp Talk podcast. We're down here at 701 Pratt Street. I'm Wayne Viner. That's Bruce Posner. We've got intern Mason. We are here live where the decision by the Board of Regents to reinstate DJ Durkin, Damon Evans, and, and keep Wallace Lowe for a while has just been made. Mason? Well, I got one. And Go ahead. Dave Ginsburg was trying to ask this question. I'm pretty sure he might have. DJ Durkin's on sideline on Saturday, and immediately it's all back to all these people, and they are out there, and I've seen them already on Twitter and social media that say this is an absolute disgrace of the university that he's still here, and Damon should have been fired, Lowe should have been fired, and Durkin should have been fired. How? That's a good point, and the before we get to that answer, Wallace Lowe wouldn't answer that question. He deflected that off to Damon Evans. That it wasn't up to Wallace Lowe. I found that very uh, interesting. Well, if he's well, on the sidelines? Uh, he said I have nothing. But it's not. Is, is it really Lowe's decision? No, but he was asking anybody who would know. And But the fact that Lowe made it a point to say it wasn't his decision really struck me as odd. Continue, please. It's, I would agree with him, though. That's not his decision. It's a decision of, and I really think the way these people in that in the gossip football team house work is is that the best thing for our team and if the answer is yes then he's going to be there if the answer is no it then seem like now i maybe i misunderstood what uh mr brady said but it seemed like they had talked to a lot of players a lot of parents uh, and uh from reading the report i think it was 96 players or former players and and the the, the gen was the general consensus that they like DJ and st you know, I'm sure there were but we're people already, who don't and we're already hearing reports yeah. of people who don't Mason. yeah and that's what I was going to say we were talking with some friends the other week and they probably brought up a point that's going to remain true some people are going to leave if DJ's there and some people would have left if he was fired exactly so you can't you got a hundred players on a team not every not everyone's going to be happy and right. I think this whole situation proved that from guys like E.J. Donahue and Gus Little to players like the Brooks family that completely support D.J. There are going to be people that are angry when you go through a coaching change, that don't like the way the new guy does it, like the way the old guy, you know, everything is different. Football is not a book where it says, here's how you do it. Yeah. Well, it's you know, everyone has books their own on way. football, well, actually. <laughs> you take a look at somebody like uh, uh, Kasim Hill. Look what he's been through to get to a position now where maybe he has a bright future, you know, right. and you change. the. No, I think it's more than mm -hmm. maybe. I think that game, I was very impressed with his passing. So if DJ would have been let go and mm -hmm. 20 guys left, mm -hmm. he's out there in the cold, you know, or he would have left. Yeah, but him leaving doesn't do him any good. No. Okay. No. Nope. 
he's establishes you know QB one, and you know his future, his future is with the University of Maryland. All right. Well, we are going to take a break here. Bruce is going to tell us a couple of kind words about Coons Ford. How long have you known Dennis Colazzo? Uh, forever, Coons? forever. And I thank Dennis for uh, understanding how we got into this podcast show tonight, and not you know not having the normal his normal presence on which is always missed but uh no place better to buy a car in the world at coons ford uh certainly uh and also dennis i actually found out that he was going to be reinstated from dennis because really? dennis watches everything i mean right. I, I would have found out eight seconds later right. from you but right. uh dennis watches everything and uh he also saw about ty montgomery mm -hmm. that you say ty is a great montgomery. pickup i think ty montgomery is a great pickup for the ravens but we'll get back to the show stuff yeah go ahead uh so we thank dennis thank for all dennis. his support and on saturday coming up of course is uh, sports maven and we will continue this discussion i'm sure and as well as and think about the game that dj comes back to Yep. The attempt, maybe the best shot in the sixth win, right, on a pick'em basis. So, against yeah, Michigan State, the pick'em, pick'em. Let's take uh, some predictions right now. The line, where does it move? Well, the line's a pick'em. I think the line's a line. I don't think it moves, but if you, it depends the reaction and everything. But you know, there was, there was a lot of empty seats and seats. You know, if you want to come out right. and see the mm -hmm. event, there are tickets available. They are Certainly. all over StubHub. Well, you're gonna. You probably have an opinion because you asked the question. But before we move on to Michigan State, it was nice to win a game, 63-33. We haven't really talked about that game. You did on the podcast, on the Terp, on the Young Terps podcast, but I haven't gotten a chance to do this. And our old line tailgating club, which is Ben Page and, and me and some other guys, got 700 kids out to that game, 700 underprivileged kids. That's were fantastic, Wayne. To a Maryland game, so that's good. So Maryland, Michigan State, both 5-3, and three, both 3-2 three and two in the conference. Mason, what do you think having D.J. Durkin back is going to do, positive Ooh. or negative? I'm going to ask one question while you think. How would you get all those tickets from Hill? Well, Ben Page has been raising money through that tailgate that we have. Did Maryland donate and anything? Maryland, at the end, made up the difference. We got to 500. Maryland allowed us to bring a couple. Was of that Damon's kids. decision? Or? I talked to Damon. I talked to the ticket office. We got it done. The important part is we got it done, and, yes, Damon had something to do with it. Right. 63 points also helped. I mean, it made it something to see that was worthwhile. Uh, go ahead, Mace. See, um I would love to see Canada back in the box come Saturday. I feel like play calling would be much improved. Different things would be used but different he, times. But he's going to play call anyway. Yeah, but he's trying but to the, coach during the, the game. Even he's complaining no, 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 about no, no. that. No, that's, that's, that's not it. That's not what I'm saying. It what could be saying? part of it. I'm saying you're talking about a guy that's a renowned coordinator, but not from the field. He's a renowned coordinator from the box. So we're right. talking so about the coach's box. Yeah, right. I think the play calling would change. I think you would see a lot more just – we see the same play. Same Maybe plays. next week. Like, I don't think it'll be this week. Then he'll move back to the coach's box? And no, he'll uh, move upstairs. Yeah, I think he will. If this DJ's week? on the field, from what he I He does heard, not like being on the field. Yeah, he that's, said that's he doesn't why. like to call plays. He can't get the rhythm. Play calling for him is a job, I believe what he said, and I might have this quote wrong, something that's much better at a desk. You can have all the plays laid out. You have all your charts in front of you, and you can look through what you want to call, and it's much more difficult for him to do it on the field. One thing that DJ... Uh, did well was to hire Matt Canada. Apparently. All right, because Matt Canada has been a great addition to the offense. Okay. And, he, yeah, he's got the weapons, but he knows right. how to use them. Right? So Although he didn't know how to use them against Iowa. But That was a strange game. And the more I've read, Mason's take on this, that they were just a few plays away. And I saw it when I thought that Maryland might have connected on a touchdown, but they got intercepted started to be echoed in other places that they said just had some plays they left on the field and they could not get themselves into that game you close up the building so we we stayed here as long as we can on this well, podcast wait, let's finish outside and we're going to take one more break and we'll be back with you to wrap this up in a moment you're listening to the first ever trip talk podcast we're back. It is the last segment of the first ever Turp Talk podcast. Now we're outside of the University of Maryland System building. All right, here's my question to you guys, and we all know the answers, but this is, I'm curious. In your opinion, does anybody leave the team? Yes. Uh, I think I've been tipped off. 
by somebody at ESPN that it's possible that some guys walked out of the meeting. That doesn't quit mean the you leave the team. I that know. Is completely I, I, different. I just picked up on that. You're right. In uh, the end, the way, the, no. The In way the, things work now, yes. People just leave. They just decide that that's it. They don't really care. I can't imagine. Not after this. Not not for Jordan. They're going to bring it back about you got to finish the season for Jordan. We got a chance to go to a bowl game. You guys got to tough it I out. I could see him leaving at the end of the year. Yeah. Okay. But oh, you meant right now, right? Yeah. Now. yeah. Like Saturday. I don't think so. You think not, everybody quit today? No. It's not in their interest to. In other words, well, people get emotional. People do well, stupid could, things. Listen, it could happen, and that was certainly, I'm sure, considered. You know? I, I actually don't know if it was. I'm not sure it was part of the review. And then DJ has to start recruiting right away? Yeah, he How does. How many guys have committed? Nine. Nine, and Nine right now. Did but any of them leave? The tight end was squishy. Did he actually come not in? Not him. Uh, he never committed. You are oh. right about that. No, the only guy that left was an offensive lineman by the name of Parker Moore who was a three-star guy. He left a long time ago. And are there guys but, on the verge of committing? Yes, there are some guys on the verge of committing. Right. Dave told us on the podcast a few weeks ago, Khalid Boateng, who's a lineman out of South Florida, the tight end that we were talking about with uh, Dave on the podcast. There's There are guys, and yes, I feel like now you'll see four or five guys in a month. Right, and well, one of Maryland's recruits who plays in Virginia, had, I think, at uh, Flint Hill in Virginia, had a monster game uh, last night and then a big win. He's in the post-top 20, and I don't recall his name. Back to Bruce. Yeah, my, my thought is that, uh, look, it's going to take a couple weeks to like get back in the flow, and unfortunately, we have the two biggest games, right? This week, and is Indiana next week? Yeah, right. it is. So the schedule, 3.30, so, it's Michigan State. I think it's noon at Indiana. There is no time. There Michigan is no State. time. They didn't, and they're on the six-day bye now? Yeah, I think so. Boy, Michigan, State Michigan State's at 12. 12. 12. 12. Right. Indiana, we don't know yet. Indiana, we don't know yet. Then, of course, Ohio State and Penn State. Now, talking with some people today at the press conference that are not optimistic about Maryland football, now think that there are three winnable games left on this schedule. And they're not Penn optimistic. State. And they're not they're not optimistic people about this. Okay, which three do you have? Well, Penn of State. course, yeah, Penn State gets added to that list. And you don't think we can beat Urban Meyer now? They said he has health concerns. Apparently, if you knock uh, Haskins off his spot, things do get rough. But, I agree. The double A you know, gap blitz. I, I just don't. I just, there's no way. That's not happening. No, right. they're not beating Urban Meyer. They're just not doing it. All right. Well, I but think they could beat uh, Penn State, I, and they certainly will be probably no more than a four-point underdog against Indiana, uh, and they're picking this four, week. Four uh, underdog at Indiana? Yeah, probably. At Indiana. probably be a field no goal. way. No way. All Indiana's right. on the verge of three and six. I, I really don't see. All right, Mason. We, we well, hope I, you know what you're doing with that I one. Think, I, think I think. I think it's do. time to Bruce, wrap, let's wrap it up. This is. Let, let's leave it like that. We'd even say, what happens tonight, Wayne? Exhibition game against yeah. Lynn. Lynn from Boca. Right. Well, I don't think we're going to make it out there this time, but we will be out there for Delaware next Tuesday. Opening night. Are they are they giving away hot water tonight uh, in honor of Boca? <laughs> you gotta, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. But uh, for, for all the people out in Boca, we're just making fun of you a little bit. Bruce, best thing you saw today at this press conference? Uh, I just saw, I thought, I thought that uh, Brady was... Very, very, he had his act. He was prepared. He was really prepared. And I, I don't know how it's going to be accepted or unaccepted. You saw you saw the questions were flying out were all negative. They were. They were, like, jumping all but over that's, the But that's the press's but, job around here. Yeah, Mason. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. I would say confidence is from Brady. Not, not as much low, but from Brady. Brady thought they knew they did – what they believe to be the right thing. And I feel like that's the most important thing that you can get is when you do something good or bad, right or wrong, if you're going to stand by that, you got to stand by it and you got to stand by it with full confidence. And I think that's what Brady did. Who knows what really what's going to happen with this football team nobody going knows. forward? Nobody. They don't nobody know. Knows. The commission doesn't know. DJ Durkin doesn't know. Okay, Mike, the only thing uh, I can say is that this show will be up tonight. Uh, if you're listening to it, it's been posted. Okay, but I mean it'll be Tuesday. <laughs> it'll be a Tuesday right. night show. For Who knows Wednesday. what can happen by tomorrow? By tomorrow. And with that, we will uh, bid you farewell until Saturday, when you will hear well, the podcast on tomorrow. Oh, there's the a podcast. Pod- I forgot what day of the week it is.
Well, well, was that my, like was that my podcast or no, that's no, your been podcast up? has been off? All right. <laughs> yeah, uh, just a note to all of you that didn't listen to that. Bruce, it took him, and I believe it's 70 weeks because our numbering's actually off on right. the podcast to make it onto the podcast, but he did. He well. did, so congratulations on that. There is a Young Turfs podcast on Wednesday night, Sports Maven Radio Show on 1300 CBS Sports Radio on Saturday, and then we will see you from the field after Maryland, Michigan State. I will say this, by Saturday, I think we'll be clearer. Okay, maybe. 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 But uh, this has been quite a day. It's quite been, a day. Quite a day. Might never quite see a day. again. And over thirty dollars to park, and I'll leave it at that. And you're mad. Thirty dollars. You got a hundred between the three of us. Good afternoon from downtown Baltimore. <laughs>